Good morning. This is Super Dale. Let's go flying. Got my son Jordan with me. Dominator paraglider, baby. Now, why are the best pods in the world flying a complete beginner glider that's the safest glider on the market? Well, it's because it also has the best performance. <laughs> I have tested thousands of wings in my many, many years and years and years. And as you can see for our videos, we continue to test all the new wings that come out. And there's nothing that has beaten the performance of this Dominator. I set the world speed record on it at 51 miles an hour. So it's like if something doesn't beat its performance, why would you go to a less safe wing? That would not make any sense. So you get the performance and the safety. Now, we have quite a bit of wind this morning. So, I am going to ball my wing up and just open it when I'm ready. Flat top 200R, baby. 200R over the Vitarazzi. The 200 is just flat out better. This is the new unit. So, you'll see in all of our recent videos, we're flying the 200R and not the old Vitarazzi. Uh, the 200R is 200 cc's. So you have a good chunk more power and engine response than the 185, and it's exactly to the ounce the same weight. So you get the same weight, but more power, faster engine response, better bark. Plus you have better reliability. You just don't have weird funky issues like you do with the Vitarazzi. The Vitarazzi can have issues that are so confusing, you gotta take it to an expert mechanic to try and figure it out where the Minari has been really, really solid. We have been very, very happy with the 200R. Uh, and then another huge one is it has a whole bunch less torque steer, felt torque steer. So you have the huge power, but with a lot less torque than the old Viterazzi. So it's like it is a total no-brainer. We all flew it back to back to back, and it was just a hands-down no-brainer. The 200R is way better. So it's like you see a lot of people out there flying the old Vitarazzi. You should tell them, hey, they need to upgrade to the flat top. 200R, baby. It's a whole new world. Power's your friend. So the there are weaker motors on the market that are upwards of five pounds lighter, but there's not a big difference. So they're really not that much lighter. Other than it does feel a lot lighter. It, you know, it doesn't sound like five pounds is that much, but it does feel lighter. But it's actually harder to launch the lighter, weaker motors because the power doesn't rip you off the ground, so the transition to flight has to be almost perfect on super weak motors like top 80s and you know the Atom 80 and stuff like that. Woohoo! Look at that. Flat top, baby. Dominator just comes up and sits there and says, Hello, I'm ready whenever you are. Love this wing. It's my baby. Flying an extra small today. in front of the guy launching. So don't fly upwind. You're noticing I'm staying downwind of Jordan as he's launching, so it is not polite to fly in front of them. Super Jordan! 135 pound Jordan! That's it. He's flying a 4XS Dominator, which is 16 square meter, minus 21 square meters. And we're both flying flat top 200 R. And that is the best gear and safest gear on the market, bar none. And the gear you fly is literally the number one most important factor in safety. 
Now that sounds a little strange. Why would the gear be safer than the pilot or pilot skills? That's because it doesn't matter what your skill level, you're still gonna hit the ground. <laughs> Think about riding a dirt bike. It doesn't matter if you're a total newbie or the best motocross rider in the world. You still dump it because everyone kind of pushes their own personal level and it, so it really doesn't matter your level. So at some point, you might smack into the ground. Well, if you have the best gear in the world, as soon as you lose control, it's up to that gear that, to dictate that outcome. So that's why the gear is so critical because even at my skill level, I still screw up and mess up. Nobody's perfect, crap happens. You're playing around, you're pushing the limits to keep it fun and always progressing. And at some point, you're gonna screw up or trip on a rock and fall down and this and that. And so once you lose control, it doesn't matter what your skill level is. It's up to the gear to dictate that outcome. That's why it is so life and death critical to fly a flat top and a dominator. And that's why we do, because I can sell any gear on the market and beat any price out there by a hundred bucks on anything. So it's like, I could easily beat anyone's price, but we sell the best gear because that's what we fly. That's what I put my kids on. That's my son. I don't put him on a total death trap glider they call reflex, because I love my son and I don't want to murder him. People pushing the, that gear are just getting people killed. I mean, and they got another person killed literally just recently. Yet another. I mean, there's been over 80 deaths. There's so many, it's like I lose count. I used to try and remember the names just so I could quickly list off 20 names of people who have died on hoax flex death traps they call reflex gliders. But it's, it's literally absurd. So many people dead. And those are just the ones that I personally explained and warned not to fly the gear who then ignored me and then died exactly how I warned them. So over 80 people have died. The reason I remember that number is because those are just the ones that I personally warned not to fly gliders that they call reflex. And then they're like, oh, yeah, sure, yeah, 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 yeah. and they just talk trash and blah, 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 blah. Oh, this is new to bam. They're dead. Just like that. And, you know, if you have a little bit of logic and reason, you're going to realize nobody on the market is doing what we can do on Dominators. So if there's any benefit to a hoax flex death trap, why can't they do what I can't do? If the glider had more performance, they would very easily be able to outfly and show beating all of my records. But they can't. <laughs> I got the altitude, distance, and speed record. It's like we got it all and safety. So there's no point to fly in death traps if there's no benefit for it. I mean, if you could fly at 70 miles an hour on a death trap, then you might have a viable reason to go, okay, I'm sacrificing safety for performance. But when the Dominator has more performance, it's like you're being a moron to be a moron. It's just stupid. There is no logical reason. Zero competent pilots fly gliders they call reflex. Not one single one. If somebody flies a glider they call reflex, you immediately know this person has no comprehension or understanding of the sport. They were never raised up in the sport by an actual pilot with real training and real, you know, listening to experts. It makes no sense. With that many dead, the facts are the facts are the facts. They're so retardedly obvious. They're deadly obvious way over 80 times over. And those are just the people who didn't listen and died exactly how I warned them they were going to. Because you're thousands of times more likely to take a collapse on a glider they call reflex. And when they collapse, they do a backflip 180 and lock you into a face down spiral. Bam, you're dead. You hit face first at 80 to 105 miles an hour. Not even a flat top is going to save you from that. You would exceed the crumple zone. Ooh, check out what's on here. 